Okay, it's now five after 12. Um, any public comments that you can see in the chat, Medea? No, there's none. And also no, no other um, emails or anything associated with it? No. Okay, I'll close the public part of it. And we'll go to the first item on the agenda, which is the adoption of the minutes from the May 10th, 2023 SRL minutes that were sent out. Um, do I have a motion? I'll move that we uh, accept the minutes from the last meeting as written. Do I have a second? Okay. Uh, so we have a first and a second. Um, all in favor say, or raise your hand, I guess, in favor of the, adopting the minutes. Aye. Uh, all opposed. All right, I see that it passes unanimously and the motion will carry. So now we move on to the second part of it, of the meeting, which is just kind of, I'd like to open it up to just kind of an open forum for us to talk about the, the groups, what's working, what's not, what, what we need to do. I noticed that not everyone is, uh, is signed up for a group. Um, so I just to see if there's any interest from those that aren't signed up right now that would like to get involved with one of the groups. And then, um, so on the diversion group, focus group number one, I have uh, Colin Charbonneau, Katie McNulty, Justin Bingham, Aaron Stromberger, and Sheriff John Knowles. Whereas there anybody that's not signed up for one that would be interested in also joining in uh, diversion group one. And I don't see a ton of people there. No. The second one is focus group two, mental health. Um, I also see Colin Short. Colin, you signed up for every one of them? Look at you. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, Colin Charbonneau, Katie McNulty, Christy Ray, and Chief Ellis. Was there anyone else that wasn't signed up for that would like to show some interest in joining that focus group? Oh, we see no one. The third focus group is a racial and equity group. Um, Colin Charbonneau, Katie McNulty, Justin Bingham, and Rochelle. Anybody else interested in joining that group that's not already signed up for one? And then last but not least, the focus group four, which is the therapeutic courts. Um, I have Colin Charbonneau, Katie McNulty. Hey, did you sign up for a multi? Yeah, you did. Uh, Laura Patton, did she join us yet? Not um, yet. You haven't seen, okay. No, uh, Randy, up. Randy M. Fred and John Haley. Anyone else want to sign up for one of those uh, groups? Hey, Mike, but, this is Tim. I was on that one too, the Therapeutic Courts. Okay. We okay. Add, uh, Tim? What? Yeah, please. All right. Tori, did, were you on one of these or did you have an interest in getting on one of these? You know, we're kind of on our island here, which sometimes yeah. is good. But I'll tell you what, Mike, just put me where put me on one where you think I would fit best or where you may have a need. I don't want to be a call-in, but I'd be on all of them. <laughs> yeah. But. Or, or Katie. Yeah. Yeah, no calling or don't call in or Katie me, but put me where you think that there's a need or where I might fit best. Well, we could use some definitely some help on the mental health focus. And I don't know if that impacts you a great deal over in juvenile. And the other one would be diversions. I think you bring some strength to that one too, because you've got some experience in some of those diversion programs too. So well, either one. actually, we Christy's been a wonderful help to us because we lost our mental health provider and could not hire one out of the community. So they've been over here helping us with our kids and their mental health issues. So, OK, either I'll one, put, like I said, you pick I'll put one. you down in the middle, mental health group, Tori. OK. 
and then um, um, Mike Kettlestead, are you got any interest in joining one of these, or do you think it's represent? Are you representing the uh, Sheriff Knowles? I'm just representing the sheriff, so I should probably be assigned anything. So you'll be in that diversion group, okay? And I think that's everybody. Steve, I think you had said made something. Can you? Are you able to have? You have audio now, Steve. You well, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, did you have any interest on in being taking part of those, or you just want to take that risk management overview of all of them, the materials presented from the groups? Yeah, I, I really didn't have any intention in in uh, a direct association or with with one of the committees, but but certainly available for you know risk related. Um, assessment or input so yeah just risk evaluation of them okay all right sounds good all right so from focus group one is there someone that could talk from that group about what's going on with that group have you met who did you guys decide to have as a spokesman for your group Um, I don't, honestly, I don't know if we picked a spokesman, but I, I did keep minutes, so um, I'd be happy to speak on behalf of Colin and Katie since they're busy okay. <laughs> with okay. many other groups. Um, Katie McNulty was present. We met on uh, June 27th. Katie and Colin were present. Chris Thompson was there on behalf of uh, Sheriff Knowles, and then I also invited Kelly Fox from our office because she's the current diversion uh, manager. Uh, case manager in our office just to weigh in on stuff. Um, so I guess just briefly, we discussed, you know, the current uh, diversion program that we have in Superior Court, um, uh, satisfied with the current requirements of the program, but we all agreed there's room for growth. I mean, we we could take on significantly more here at pretrial services even now. Um, Colin and Katie both indicated that it would, it would be ideal if um, they could have dedicated attorneys in each office make and receive these offers, but they're both overwhelmed right now with caseloads and budget constraints, caseload standards, et cetera. So um, that being said, we all agreed um, to review, re-review, re but review the existing uh, program eligibility guidelines. We're kind of in the, in the middle of that right now, just making sure everything's current and where we want them. Um, our office had last year, implemented like a, a pilot program with with both offices um, pre-screening people right at the, right at the onset of arrest to see who is eligible for diversion we kind of paused that um, back around february we're going to re um, institute that just to get some names on on people's radars to see about making offers as early as possible that might include diversion to kind of open up the scope we also talked about opening um or increasing restitution limits. Traditionally, we've done about $5,000 and lower for felony cases, willing to revisit that and maybe increase some of those amounts if it's feasible. We kind of took a look at some of the um, um, examples that Medea had put together from across the country. One of the one of the sites, I can't remember now, but they had kind of a, like a, almost like what drug court does with the observation phase, um, uh, just so people could observe diversion programs before they enter instead of you know signing that day and then finding out later it wasn't what they thought <laughs> um and then um the, the last thing that came up was oh, it's the last thing that came up was the the new drug laws that are coming into effect um they make a lot of references to diversion programs what that means we don't really know right now so um not really sure how that's all going to play out. So we're just kind of keeping a, our eye on that. So I guess the, the two action items that came out of our meeting was just to review the current diversion program, expand it where we can, and then uh, resume this uh, daily screening of, of inmates who might be eligible for diversion in the near future. That sounds great. And so, and then also you're, you said you guys are going to inventory the the existing program, kind of look those over and, and see what those are, how they're functioning and so forth and yeah. I know, you know when you get more involved with those and you guys start coming up with some ideas on how you want to handle that and kind of a roadmap looking forward um 
make sure you identify the cost with this so we can, you know, we can look at the cost, what the expense would be, and then who's missing from the table, kind of Aaron, you know, um, who needs to be included in those conversations that may not be there mm -hmm. and um, have those type of conversations too. But it sounds like you guys are off to a, a pretty good start, actually. So, okay. And then um, focus group two, the mental health. Did anyone, yeah, we had a meeting yet on that, um, Colin? No, Mike, we haven't had a meeting yet on that okay. one. We need to do that. So do you think, um, how do you feel about having um, Christy Ray kind of lead the Get that conversation started. Maybe if uh, Medea, if we could reach out to Christy and see if she could start getting some energy around that, because she, you know, she's a she's a phenomenal person to work with. She's got a ton of ton of knowledge, and so it'd be really good to get her, you know, kind of leading that up there. So maybe we could do that, Medea, try and get to pull those pieces together. Unless, unless um, Chief Ellis, you have some other ideas about that, but that's. Uh, I think Christy raised definitely a way that we would head, you know, on that part of it. So, okay. It works, yeah. You agree, you agree as well? Okay. Then I think that's what we'll do on that focus group. Um, focus group three, um, Justin, um, you have some input on that meeting. And we, I know you guys met, but I. We, right. We, we did. Uh... I'd say probably Rochelle probably has as much to say as I would, um, but Rochelle, uh, Colin, and I, uh, was anyone else there? I, I know the three, oh, and Katie. Yep, I was there. Sorry, guys, the camera got busted, so I can only talk. Okay. So the, the four of us uh, met to discuss uh, sort of what we wanted to do with the race equity uh, committee. Uh, we have not selected a, a chair or a spokesperson at this per, uh, at this point, we really wanted to talk about uh, sort of uh, taking an inventory of the things that had happened previously, specifically the race equity tool that this council approved uh, in 2022. Uh, we discussed uh, previous training, race equity training that we had done uh, under the MacArthur grant, and then discussed what uh, we could do going forward. Uh, but we also uh, had a conversation and I sent an email to you as well as Medea to get some feedback on just sort of what's the scope of these committees, uh, what's the level of support that will be provided to them. And then additionally, one of the things that came to uh, our minds as we uh, discussed a lot of this is that a lot of what we would probably put forward would have a monetary uh, note to it that if we suggested that uh, different entities across the county provide ongoing race equity training. There's a cost to that. And we wanted to know sort of, you know, how do we put that forward? It, it, do we need to include that? Uh, those kind of conversations. So it was more taking um, a sort of a look at what we've done previously, and then also getting a, a general idea of what we should be doing moving forward. Also sort of the time horizon on the work of this committee. That was one of the things that we were, uh, I guess, a little bit confused on is what is the time horizon? Um, are you looking for a, you know, quick sort of prescription or a longer term plan? Yeah. And I, I think I addressed most of it in email. I, I, I'm hoping that all of you got a copy of the email. Um, I realize this is going to take time you know, for all of us to go through probably months to, to get through to actually do a good job on it. And really what I'm looking for is for the group to come back with recommendations of where they think the direction of this justice system should go, both city and county and valley, everyone included. And then, um, you know, identify the cost of what the cost would be and identify best practices of what, what to review. And then I envision meeting with the policymakers from those that those areas and talking through some of those adjustments. And that's kind of how I see it, it you're moving through the, uh, the future part of it. The Board of County Commissioners, you know, talking with the city council, talking with those folks and making these presentations because you're right, it's gonna take buy-in from all of us to fund these things um, and just not make it just 
a county centric, you know, um, optic, but also across the city and county, the justice system as a whole. And so it, it is a heavy lift. It's going to probably take months for us to put this together. But that's kind of the direction that I see it headed in is that direction. So, and then I, I want to recognize that uh, Judge McKay has, has joined the group too. Hi, Judge. So, yes, do anybody else have any more questions about the group? And, you know, I know it's clunky, it's always clunky at the start, but I think once it starts gaining some momentum, we get some things figured out, some directions that we want to go in. We've identified some, you know, some you know, monetary value, what the outcomes, perceived outcomes will be. I think it'll go much smoother, uh, Justin, but it's going to take a while for each of the groups to work through some of those, some, some of those, you know, uh, tasks as well. So any more discussion on um, that email I sent out? Did everybody get a copy of that? Okay. Just to kind of give the overall view of it. Okay. If you have any questions at all, not that I'm the expert because I'm leaning on all of you. You guys are the, the experts. I'd be more than happy to try to get some more answers for you or identify some of those um, some of those obstacles or some of those things that you need to know. So the last group is the therapeutic courts. Um, um, Laura has joined me in my office. She couldn't get linked up with it, so she's here with me. Um, does anybody want to report out on, on that one? And have you met yet? You guys have not met yet. Is there going to be someone that was from that group? And I see that it's Colin, Katie, uh, Laura Patton, uh, John Haley, Randy, and Tim. Is there one that's willing to kind of take the lead on that to try to pull these things together? The meeting. Looking at you, Tim. <laughs> There needs to be you're really someone to kill me. Together. What's that? Yeah, so you're killing me. <laughs> I will get the group together and we'll, we'll chat because I know everybody's got some pretty full points. And then I, I kind of see that too, kind of going back to the version, kind of an inventory of what we have, you know, some of the gaps, some of those type of things that you guys can identify, kind of following along with what Aaron had talked about for the diversion, you know, portions of it too. So. And then I will then my report out is we've been doing an inventory on the community correction center, you know, as a sentencing alternative for the courts. Um, and what some of the challenges have been, because ideally we'd like to, you know, meet the expectations of the court. We're looking at our current programming and how they're operating. A lot of it's done through our breaking barriers program through the out of Geiger. Um, you know, that includes the IOP and some of those programs. Um, it also needs to support some of the diversion efforts that are coming out of pretrial services. We recognize that as well. So we're trying to, uh, that being um, Jason Robinson and um, Tim out there are gonna pull together an inventory of those that I hope to bring back to the group and then identify that. And then just kind of the overall strategy of what we're thinking for the Community Correction Center as it moves forward to get you all's input on that on what would help be, you know, some of the successful outcomes that you would like to see, i.e., I know EHM, we know, you know, work group programs, we know, you know, day reporting, we know some of those, but really what we need to identify is where your those gaps at the court where they just can't find a place to place them, you know, something that some program that they'd be beneficial to them. I think we should incorporate probation, which, you know, would take come out of the district court too, because I know that they have some challenges out there as well, trying to figure out some of these programs. So I'd really like to pull all that back together, and then I'll make a presentation on that probably in the next meeting or so to get you all's input on that part of it. Um, I don't know where the staffing levels are going. I didn't get a chance to catch up with Ashley um, Cameron on that to see what some of the things that they're doing. It's a concern of all of ours that we, you know, maintain our staffing levels. Um, and I'm hoping that she she has some strategies on some of the recruiting and some of those efforts that we're going to do moving forward. And then um, I'm hoping that she can bring some of those ideas back to the to this council too, it's just to, to consider as far as going forward on some of the staffing portions of it. So having said that, um, 
I can open it up now for open discussion. If there's something you all want to talk about at all, or is this going to be that awkward moment where I'm staring at everybody's faces and they're staring at me? John had a question. Okay, John. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, um, and thanks, Tim, for uh, taking on the duty to lead leading the therapeutic court group. But I will remind you in the last. In the last meeting, you mentioned that uh, it's very important to create a domestic violence court. And so I look forward to, you know, with regard to uh, therapeutic courts, I was thinking along the lines of expansion, other other programs. I'm not sure what all we what all we cover. We can talk about that in our next meeting of of, a, of a focus group four. But um, I appreciate you taking that lead, Tim, and I look forward to meeting with the rest of the group. Thanks, John. Anyone else have any comments or just this awkward stare at each other moment? I have a question. Um, our group was discussing and wondering the status of the race equity toolkit and where that was left within our community, because that would be able to help our group move forward. So do we locate a copy of that to send to Medea? Okay. And then, um, and I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I let that slip. I was going to send you a copy of it, and I forgot to do that part of it. Um, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, the last application of it was uh, was for the bylaws, and we were going through the bylaws portion of it. And so, um, I don't think we've had another application of it since then. And you recall us using it? I think it was the last time we used it was for the bylaws. We were reviewing the bylaws, so we'll also send that over to you. So. So it was still just being reviewed then. No, no agency was using it. No, it was a, it was adopted. It's actual uh, came came out of district court. Um, um, Amy Mowers we want to kind of worked on it and located it, but um, we we actually asked that the group do a kind of a look through on the on the bylaws to make sure that we weren't you know running a, a foul with any of those concerns out of the racial inequity. We still don't have a member of the racial inequity group. We're trying to locate someone to, to fill that role. Um, and we've had several, we've reached out to several or we haven't had much interest. So you all know of anyone that would be interested in filling that empty chair on this council, that would be a, a, a big benefit to us and you know, step into that role. So and the district court has never used it. No, district court never used the uh, racial equity. Right. Yeah, we just used it on the yeah. bylaws. That's where, yeah, that's it. That's the only application I, get, I think we've used on it, Rochelle, um, up to date. You know, okay. if the other up, then Ozzy formally adopting it would be something we would use at the beginning of the thick uh, reunification of this council. And then us actually adopting it into the bylaws, that it would be something we would use. For any of these projects or any of these things going forward, would have that racial equity look, and then um, use the toolkit on it. So, so, okay, so it is not being used. I'm sorry, what? It is not being used. Well, it's not. We haven't had anything to use it on yet. So, as you guys spin out these these processes and things that we're looking at, all of it will be reviewed by the racial equity. So, uh, Mike. John here. Uh, I think that we had a general consensus. I don't think we voted on it, but we talked about the value of the racial equity toolkit, the importance and uh, keeping it a priority in just about every move that we make as a, as a council. It, it needs to land at the very top of our concerns. And I think there was pretty big consensus on that. I don't remember, did we vote to add it to the bylaws? Yeah, we had yeah, a vote. Yeah, just, if we I, I don't know that we added it to the bylaws, but we did approve the toolkit. Right. And that was done. Actually, I misspoke. It wasn't in 22, it was in 21. Um, we approved the toolkit. But I think one of the concerns that we had in our race equity group was that this thing was approved and then just put on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the main issues, I guess, we have. And it's sort of, you know, our modus operandi, I would say, in Spokane. And we agree to do things, but then we never really implement them, especially when it comes to things of this nature. So I think that that it will be part of what we do as a committee 
is to build out some type of work plan that not just this council, but uh, you know, a recognition that we all run departments and that we could be using this tool on a day-to-day -day basis as we make substantive decisions that affect you know large swaths of the criminal justice system. Oh, okay, Justin. Now, did we talk about, I thought we talked about. If we add that to the bylaws, we have to go back to our our resolution, our authority, and get new approval from the commissioners. Was that right? I don't believe this at all has to be added to the bylaws. This is essentially just a, a, an agreement that we would put ideas through a toolkit. It's a tool. Yeah. It doesn't have to be incorporated in the bylaws like any other process uh that we would agree to to do it, it's i think you're meshing melding them together when it's inappropriate to do so all right we just i i really think that we need to hold ourselves to a standard and and ensure that we use that racial equity toolkit as a filter in much of what we're discussing just about everything i know everybody agrees with that and i want to make sure that there's uh an authority that holds us account accountable to that. Well, ideally, we have somebody that is sitting in the racial inequity group, and they would they would have that tool as well. They would work with their committee because they would have a form a committee. They would review, you know, initiatives or or projects that were spinning off from this committee. That was the intent of it, and so, but we don't have anyone sitting in that chair. And we haven't for almost a year since Carmen left. So right. we we need someone to fill that. If you guys know anyone that would be interested in filling that role, um, let us know and we submit their names forward. Well, this focus group that Justin is uh, heading up, the racial equity focus group, wouldn't they have the authority to uh, to do something there or not? Well, I think one of the things that we were struggling with was that we have no community engagement in our group. And so we need to go out and try to find the people that Mike's discussing, members of the community that would have a lot more to say about this than just us that work internal. Okay. So uh, I, I feel like probably that goes with, for all of these work groups that we need to have more engagement than just these system actors, but specifically on race equity, we need to make a concerted effort to, to bring in more voices. Because at the end of the day, the people that are sitting on this committee, well, let's be honest, we're all white and we all work for the government. And you know, three out of four of us are, are lawyers. So we're not exactly the most diverse uh, subcommittee, especially with this uh, the specific uh, mandate that we're after. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that, Justin. All right, thank you, Justin. And I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody knows that Rochelle and I have have concerns with regard to that toolkit, and we uh, will hope the best going forward and and getting somebody from uh, the community to be involved in that. Thanks. I think I've hit that one hard now. So there is just backing up a step, just since I'm still newer to this group. So there is a spot within this group that specifically is, it sounds like you're looking for then like a person of color to sit that has this race equity title to it, yes. that then uses this toolkit or that lens when we're implementing or attempting to implement different projects within our various agencies. Okay, yeah. and that's the responsibility then of that. It is. It's email. written into that. That I know is written okay. into the bylaws. We added that section on it. But I would say that um, we definitely need to get someone on the board and do it. It's been a year since we've had anybody on it. And I, you know, I, I understand Justin's um, being hesitant to, to, to not have that voice sitting here to, uh, to inform on some of this stuff. But it, we tried. I, I mean, we've asked a lot of people to do it, and we're just not getting responses to do it. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, um, you know, have to be an African American, be any of any nationality that's really ready to sit down and do it. But we prefer that we have some representation that 
that meets that goal. And you can you can also accomplish that goal once this person, it's the same kind of a chair that you you fill, Rochelle, and also that John fills. It's that role where you can also bring together on the committee whoever you want to bring on that committee that you can work with and go do those type of things. It would have similar rules if, as it states in the bylaw that someone has to keep minutes, somebody has to keep records of it. But we'd have that voice back at the table that that represents that community that we don't have right now. And that's it, we're really, really missing that component. So okay, thank you. That's super helpful. Yeah. Um, oh, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. Do you know do you have if you have some individuals in mind, please okay. reach out to them. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I will. Yeah. Um, and then changing topics of something else that would really help our group is a big piece of it was training. And so I'm just wondering if we come up with a plan of training different agencies, is there a way that I could know in order to get quotes from presenters? I need to know kind of like the like the types of like disciplines that would join the training, like how many people would join the training. And so who can give me that information so then I could move forward with exploring that option more. So help me understand that a little bit better. I'm not, I don't know if I'm picking up. So quotes from. So if we were to implement a plan of training, not just like a one-time training, but an ongoing um, in order for me to have more like knowledge to be able to plan that, who who would be the audience for that training and how many people? So I would start, my first uh, step would talk to Ashley um, Cameron because the, our HR department handles all of our internal training. And, you know, they. I'm sure that it's something they could set up that they could do on their, you know, on their computers and, and take part, keep record of it and that type of stuff. So I, I would definitely reach out to Ashley and see where that fits in. Okay. And is it is it possible then like the our subgroup, our race equity subgroup, is it possible to have a training plan that then talks about where judges would be involved, where clerks would be involved, law enforcement, or like what how how much power I guess does this group actually have? So that way I don't come up with a training plan and spend work and kind of get quotes, but then no one buys into the training, I guess is my also my point of it that I'm just wondering to learn more. We're an advisory board. So it would be a recommendation from from here going forward. And so, um, but you're, that's where I would start is I would have that one-on-one -on -one with Ashley and see what the parameters are and see what, you know, falls within the, you know, what she sees or what they're doing through, what's that group called, Precip Precipio or whatever it is, some training thing that they have. See if there's some, some things that you're thinking about that already live or exist within our training, you know, um, um, our training, like, software or whatever it is that she works with on that part of it and then just kind of flesh your ideas out with her and then see where it would go from there because I think she benefits you tremendously and I could get you a number I have Medea send it to you um, but I, that that's a good starting um, she's also works with the domestic violence the YMCA and she's heavily involved with that part of it too so I, she's a great resource for you to reach out to to try to get some the parameters around that one. Okay, perfect. Thank now, you. If anybody else has any other suggestions, that'd be my suggestion. But so, and I don't know, um, Justin, on your end, who that, whether your training comes through your HR department or how that's all delivered on the city side. But those are the kind of the larger, larger discussions I'm talking about moving forward is meeting with those kind of, you know, putting some some parameters around what we're doing, it, you know, making it, you know, more feasible for the departments to take place, you know, have it take place with them and those type of things. So and that you have any other ideas, Justin, on that part of it or? No, not at this uh, point uh, when it comes to that. Because I mean, when you, you do have all these different agencies and we all have sort of different ways in which we effectuate training, uh, especially when it comes to race equity. And our uh, uh, council has now uh, created a, a race equity position and we have a new hire for that. So the city, you know, things are in flux. I think there is a, 
a fairly you know strong recognition that we need to do more. Um, hopefully that the work of this group as well as others can help get that uh, ball rolling. And it's really that melding process that's going to be, I think, challenging for this group, but I think it's necessary to, you know, if we have representatives of all these different, you know, areas, it's that melding together and figuring out how all of this is going to come to fruition, you know, based on, right, and they, you know, it might be a, uh, a bridge too far. They may say, no, that's way out of our, you know, we don't have the ability, but I think we should at least be making those recommendations from the board to try to do these things, if that makes sense. So and get the right people in the room to do it. But I certainly would take the advice of anyone here. There's a lot of experts here that could help with that part of it. So anything else? No. Anything from Superior Court, Judge McKay? Nothing. How about how about you, Jen? Is anything from your area? No. So we had, um, and I don't know where you're at. I'm sorry. My apologies for my tardiness today. Um, as to the breakout groups on mental health, the, the therapeutic treatment courts as Dutch. Again, I just need to throw out there, you know, the emphasis of the fact that we're already up and running in district court on our therapeutic courts. Uh, we got additional binders and information from our spring conference. We have now a trial judge bench book on therapeutic courts. So I certainly don't want those uh, groups to be doing more work than what's needed when the, as we like to say, the wheel has already been invented. <laughs> so. And then are you on that group? And you know, and that, whoa, that's what I was gonna ask as far as Mindy, I know, um, the different panels had been put out there. I'd ask, yeah, to be put on those groups, but I don't know if I ever. Okay, we kind of covered it at the beginning of the meeting, but okay. the first one, the first one is, is a version one, um, and on that one is is Colin, Katie, Justin, Aaron, and Sheriff Knowles, or his representative, and then for the mental health, uh, the second group it's uh, Colin, Katie. Christy Ray, Chief Ellis, and Tori. And I was thinking about reaching out to Christy Ray to kind of head that up. She's got, she brings a lot to the table. And I think that she could, you know, even though she's not on this, but she's certainly a key player in the mental health as far as the jails related and some of the other areas as well. And it might even be that um, we end up reaching out to Justin Johnson too as well in his, his area, but we got to have a starting point. So. I'm going to I'm going to rely on her to try to kick that group off and get it rolling. So if you want to be a portion of that group, um, the other one is racial inequity, which we just talked about. Is yeah. Colin, Katie, Justin Bingham, and Rochelle, and then therapeutic courts is the last one, which is Colin, Katie, um, Laura Patton, Randy, John Haley, and Tim. Mm -hmm. And Tim is going to kind of spearhead that one if you'd like to be a part of that one. And so definitely on the on the therapeutic court side, that's where district court are. We already have mental health, the um, drug DUI and veterans court. So the okay. therapeutic courts in and of itself, that's where we already have. Um, and I don't know as far as whether mental health was going to, uh, those two were going to join together because yeah. of that. Um, Maybe at some point, I think right now all they're doing is an inventory of them trying to figure out which ones we have existing and those type of things. So you probably help out a lot on that committee if you could make us So if you could put me, Medea, on the therapeutic court one. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I've already got all of the, and Judge Smith offered to come talk as well to give a status update. We got another huge grant, which is just fantastic. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, close to $70,000 um, to further implement our therapeutic court team. So it's drug oh, testing, nice. Uber rides, treatment. I mean, you name it, it's fantastic. But while you're on that, the ride share program, we got the approval <laughs> from MacArthur. So we'll be bringing that back. All we have to do is get the, we're doing the sign around on the contract. So we'll have that available too, coming back. Yeah. And it will run until the duration of the funds. We think it will last until at least January but we're hoping it might go in, into February as well. 
so the funds will be available for that. And I know Aaron's been waiting for that part of it too. So we'll have it up and available. Yeah. I have um, my just let you know, I've been keeping it on the mum side because I have bunch mates that will start giving those out when there's not any money. So I know John Witter has been forwarding or keeping me up to date on those, but we're not announcing it until we have the cards in hand and that's fully funded because we don't want our our bench mates to say, go get your Uber ride when it's not actually there just yet. Yeah. They what they the only thing that they did is they the change from the last time to this time is that they bumped up their administration fees by five percent because they want to offer a little broader services than what they're providing right now. So MacArthur was fine with it. I think it makes sense on what they're going to do with it. They're going to add a 0.5 to the program to help um, do some of the scheduling and stuff. So I think it makes a lot of sense. So maybe it'll be even smoother than it was before, I hope so. Hey, Mike. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, just to to tell Judge Fassbender where we were earlier, and even our last meeting, we talked about expanding therapeutic courts with uh, domestic violent courts. And so uh, my my position is that we should expand wherever we can. And with your experience, and and that, and you just showed us a a, a manual that is kind of a guide. Um, you'd sure be a big bonus to the therapeutic court uh, focus group so and I would say it's my it's it's not necessarily me but Judge Smith I will I will be the pass-through of his great generosity of information <laughs> super we're still about 12 or 13 minutes if anybody else has anything else Okay, I think it's actually going pretty good. I think we just have to, you know, flesh out some of these bumps and we'll get on the right pathway here. Um, I really, really, really need someone to fill that share for um, the racial inequity. So if you all could put your feelers out and see if you could get someone that's interested in doing that, that, you know, has the, has the ability to pull a committee together, you know, and the minutes and those type of things, that would be fantastic. Okay. Does uh, Carmen have a recommendation for us? Yeah, uh, she had a recommendation, and um, we put the names names through, I believe, and I don't think anything came back from. I think the board wanted us to keep looking. I don't know. I'll have to dig into that a little bit more. Yeah, so. maybe she has some other connections too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's about. Yeah, any comments, Laura? No. Okay, well then uh, we'll get the next meeting. When is the next meeting scheduled for? Um, August 9th. August 9th. Do we want to do that in person or by Zoom? All in favor of doing it by Zoom, raise your hand. All in favor of doing it by in person, raise your hand. All right, we'll do it by Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just, you know, bring back into what we talked about today. We'll rework some of the graphs on how we're going to do it and some of the different roles and responsibility. Send it back out. If you have any more clarifying questions, please ask me um, and I'll do my best to ask, you know, to answer them. But, you know, um, this is kind of a new journey for this board because before it didn't operate this way. It was more, you know, um, an idea would come up and talk about it in you know, a month later, we have a different idea and something else would come up. This is a little more regimented pathway. So I'm hoping that it, it benefits not only all of you, but it also benefits uh, the justice system as a whole. So I'm learning as I go too, and be quite honestly, but um, I'll try to keep those pieces together so you guys can see the framework and what it looks like the best I can, okay? Oh, it's, is the chat, who's in the chat? Or is there chat? No. no. Good. Okay. All right. You guys have a good uh, rest of your day and we'll see you guys next month. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Mike. Bye. Bye. Bye.